bright energy we have for our show today, so it should be a live one. Of course, the He's Innocent show comes on every Sunday at 3 p.m., and we do appreciate your patience in waiting for our telecast today. This is the one-stop shop to get all the facts about Dr. York's case, the case of Dr. Malachi Z. York, the master teacher, his case, and the fight for his freedom. So please make sure you tune in every Sunday, let other people know, not just members of the AEO or Nawabian family, but everyone worldwide who's interested in seeing justice for someone who's been wrongly incarcerated and continues to be wrongfully imprisoned to this day. Now, as we've said in previous shows, we're going to take you from the very root of the case against Dr. York all the way to the present. So today we're starting even prior to the arrest with the conspiracies. There were many people who felt disgruntled, who were coerced, who were taken advantage of and used to plot against Dr. Malachi Z. York to stop what he was doing. So we want to kind of get to the root of why these conspiracies took place, what was the mentality of the people behind the conspiracy, and at this point in time, let's look at what we can do to make it right, right? Because, of course, our goal in this show and every show is to free Dr. Malachi Z. York. That's the bottom line. So for those of you who are viewing online on WNUB-TV or listening to WNUB Radio, again, we want to thank you for your patience. And we do have a two-part show today. In the first part, we're going to deal with what is known as the South Beach Conspiracy, uh, which had a central figure known as Jacob York that we'll just explain once we get started with our first set of panelists. And also, in our second segment, we're going to be dealing with those who weren't involved in that aspect of the conspiracy, but mem many members of the Nawabian or Tamaray community who became disgruntled and again had their emotions used and manipulated to plot against Dr. York. And we want to kind of get an insight of why, because that always becomes the question when we present that people did uh, conspire against Dr. York. Why would people do these things to such a great man? And we just want people to kind of understand the mentality so that we can make things clear and right in the case. So we're going to start with our first set of panelists, and we're going to have them introduce themselves. And again, um, if you would, please give your AEO name as well as um, your English or birth name. Proud of that family. My name is Nefiro Sinhuni, also known as KUs, also known as Bernard Forster. My name is Neb Basu Atom Ray, known as Damon Pryor. My name is Fapet Hat Sehmet. My name is, uh, and my other name is Farah Muhammad. My name is Nathar Nasib Atom Ray, also known as Leah Mabern. And we want to, we want to thank all of you for being on today. And if you do have questions in the listening or viewing audience, if you are on WNEB TV, please feel free. You can type in your questions on the on the chat, and they will be communicated to the panel um, once we ask our initial questions. And also for our audience here at Mirror Number Nine, if you do have any questions, we're going to ask them to the panel after we've done the initial questions. Okay? All right. So we would like to start with um, the brother Bernard Foster, also known as Brother Kus. Um, it is to our understanding that there was some kind of indication of um, an intent to make some kind of plot against Dr. York, even prior to the South Beach occurrence. Could you explain uh, what you know about that? Yes. Um, what most people don't know is that most of these individuals who testified on behalf of the prosecution were children who were raised amongst our community and on our land, Tamaray, which is at 404 Shadydale Road. Even prior to the arrest of Dr. Malachi Z. York, um, we lived in our land, our culture. And within our culture, there were things that we, we didn't allow our children to do. Most of the things that most people don't want their children to do. We didn't have drugs, we didn't have alcohol, we didn't have crime of any type. Um, we didn't allow our children just to run around unchecked to watch anything that the, the, the public TV had on TV. Um, we had a high standard of education for our children. And uh, just like children do at times, children could be a little wild at times and want to do things outside of those things we had already regulated that children shouldn't do, such as hang out late at night. Um, we had groups of children who used to hang out 
they would uh, sneak into places here and there when they had opportunity and do the things that adolescents do. Um, that was not allowed. Several times, a lot of those children would get caught. And uh, I am speaking in, in general as well as specifically about the children who took part in the prosecution of Dr. Malachi Zior. There came a point in time where, after being caught enough times, um, and whatever punishment was dealt out, we didn't beat our children, uh, as most people in society may think uh, or do. We may have punished them by taking away certain privileges of that nature. Um, there was a point in time where some of these children had gotten together at one night and snuck into one of our buildings, which was Hathor's recording studio, and they had spoken about their being disgruntled. And they actually wrote a letter explaining exactly what they were disgruntled about and how they were going to set Dr. Malachi in New York up. Um, eventually, that letter circulated into the hands of certain adults who, at that time, passed that letter on to me, who, at that time, I did pass that letter on to uh, Dr. Malachi in New York, and that letter was made known to their parents, and it spoke vividly about how they were unhappy, some of them for different reasons. Some of them because they weren't allowed to sneak around. Some of them were disgruntled because of their parents not being able to do some of the things that they wanted to do. Uh, some of them even went so boldly as to be mad at Dr. Malachi of York because he spurned their advances. Um, once that letter began, began, began to become public information, the plot just got worse. There were points in times in the future after that where they would continuously plot uh, against Dr. Malachi Zior, and it got to a point where they uh, were plotting to do things that would have been detrimental to his life. Um, Dr. Malachi Zior, at some point in time, after that point, uh, left Putnam County and moved to Athens, Georgia, and set up residence there, and left the land in the hands of the owners who owned it at the time which were uh, the nine members of the whole Tabernacle Ministry Church Board. Um, the people who actually, the children who actually wrote this letter at different points of time, uh, their parents left the land at different points of time, moved on to other places, and some of them stayed behind. We had once even had an opportunity to have a cassette tape uh, by one of those individuals who was actually one of the witnesses for the prosecution, which he also laid out on the cassette tape exactly why they were disgruntled. Some were disgruntled because they had boyfriends that weren't living on Tamaray at the time. So if you weren't living in the community of Tamaray, then of course when night falls, you go home like anybody else goes home to their house. That made them upset. Uh, some of them were disgruntled because, like I said, their parents were being spurned by in the advances they were making towards Malachi Z. York, who was a married man at the time and wasn't interested in some of their parents. Uh, some of them were disgruntled because at the points of time when they did get caught sneaking around the land, the punishments that they were dealt out, and just like any old child would be uh, disgruntled when they're punished. It just so happened to be as time went on and they moved out into society, there was a certain amount of culture shock that took place living in a culture where they weren't just allowed to do things, where they had to go and get their education, where they had to be disciplined, and they had to dress appropriately into a culture which allows you to do just about anything you want once you reach a certain age. And even now we see